that's the first and most important concept to understand that uh, working with men that uh, help seeking entering into help seeking world is a very challenging and very anxiety provoking uh, situation for them. And a lot of therapists and doctors, physicians, psychologists don't understand it because they're well intentioned, they want to help, but they'll notice that the, the men don't comply, uh, they sometimes avoid, don't come back. And we've discovered that the entrance into getting help really should be done differently. I think the biggest psychological challenges for men to be able to talk about the psychological, social, emotional reactions is that it requires them to be self-disclosing about their fears and their anxieties. And that's, we respect that. So we may change the language when they're in and say, what do you hope to achieve by being in the group? Like what would recovery like or what what are the big challenges and difficulties you're facing now? And we could help you solve those. So problem solving, we'd use the language of problem solving. And um, so it's the fear of being seen as weak. Yeah. Erectile dysfunction and the sexual function doesn't, in the end, isn't as threatening as the urinary incontinence because males are used to being in control. And if you don't have bladder control, uh, and you have involuntary release of urine, you have lost a body sense of control. And that happens to many, uh, many men post-surgical intervention for a number of weeks. And everybody seems to focus on the more sensational, the psycho uh, sexual adaptation. But as I talk to the men, they would say the most difficult and threatening thing to them is their autonomy as a man, is their, their loss of continence because it's a shaming, um, the wearing of having to wear, you know, uh, clothing and, and they would call them like diapers, infantilizes them. And, that, and that's more on a day-to-day -day basis, not the sexual functioning. And so I think it's important that we understand how for the first time in your life, a highly successful man no longer is totally in control because too often in our society, a lot of men grow up thinking, well, their partners or wives should be the keepers of their emotional world. And they got off scot-free because they, they have to learn also how to deal with and express their emotions. So I do want to say this, one of the tips in the group is we give them skills for how to talk to one another. But the other skill we give them is we give them a grid of emotional emotions that they may be experiencing because many men don't know how to label or express their feelings. So what we do is we give them a grid that expands all the possible feelings they have and make it a bit of a competitive uh, interaction group. Like how many of these feelings do you think George had when he's talking about coming out of the oncology office when he was told he had stage whatever of cancer? And he might say, well, I was nervous. And they say, no, you're this, you're terrified, you're scared, you're worried, you're, you're uh, nervous and we make the others say, come on, help him identify more and more feelings. He says, yeah, I felt that, yeah, I felt that. And so the more labels they get, the more expressive they get of their emotions, the more they're able to release the feelings. And I would say in our groups, teaching skills for how to talk, and second, teaching skills to identify your emotional world. Because for many of them growing up, they've never, they really only have had, ever said mad, sad, and glad, rather than other emotions which they're experiencing for the first time which they've never identified before and it feels so relieving when they have an accurate connection between an emotional statement and what's going on and some people say that prostate cancer is um, is an issue for couples and I think it is too although our focus first before we work with a couple you need to work with the men themselves so they feel confident having conversations with their partners in certain areas that are helpful and some are not helpful even though they're well-intentioned